Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the County's Caregiver Support Program. I'm Lily Fisher and I'm your host and we're going to explore today many of the supports and services that are available through the County's Caregiver Support Program's website. It's easy to access and these resources are available 24 hours a day virtually. So why don't we take a look? So here we are on the website. Now it's easy to find. You go to montgomerycounty.gov and up here in the top is the search bar. And all you need to do is type in either care give giver or caregiving and that will take you directly to this web page. So let's take a little tour of the website so you can become familiar with it. This is our senior site. Our senior site includes consumer issues, employment enrichment, health, recreation, safety, senior housing, caregiver support, tax and finance, transportation, volunteer, and the senior calendar. We're going to be looking at the volunteer page on a separate episode, but today we're going to be looking at caregiver support. So at the top of the page, it actually lists everything that you can find down a little lower. So we have resources, fact sheets, brochures and guides. We have information about the county's ageing and disability services. We also have links to the county's caregiver e-newsletter and blog, plus Engage at Home. We have resources about our dementia series, and also helpful programs for our viewers. So the part that I'd like to show you first is actually this section here, our fact sheets, brochures and guides. I'm just gonna click on that. And here we are. This section here, even though it's very condensed, is actually the place where you can find all of our caregiver brochures. And many of them, are new since COVID. So we have a very straightforward caregiver supports and ageing services. And that's going to take you to a separate website, but that's perfectly fine. We also have our guide. So this guide here is specifically for families wanting to gain more information so they can provide in-home care for their loved one. There are many folk who really need to bring in a qualified and trained aid to be able to assist them. This is a 20 page document and it includes such information as how to actually get a better idea of the needs of an older adult, an overview of who are caregiver providers, what actually different caregiver providers do, how to select, how do you actually select an elder care provider, the recruitment process, what are the employer responsibilities? If you're working through an agency, the agency is the employer, but if you are employing this person yourself, then you are the employer and you have responsibilities. How to keep your loved one safe. Sometimes you aren't always going to be with your loved one all the time. That's why you actually are um, recruiting an aide. So how can you keep your loved one safe? I'm just going to scroll down we're just going to preview some of this information. So this section here is all about who are the different providers. The difference between 
recruiting yourself or recruiting through an agency. More details about that. There's a section a little bit further on, so excuse me for scrolling through all of this information. Because what I would like you to see is the next couple of checklists. You can um, print this out and do it at home. This, um, because it's a PDF, you could do it on the computer. But what it does, it actually helps you get a better understanding about what the needs are for your loved one. Does the person need help with household cleaning, social activities, meals, transportation, personal health care, hygiene, and shopping? By answering those questions to yourself, you will be better equipped to have an understanding of the level of skills, qualifications, and support that's going to be available to you. So you are going to be wanting to recruit someone. So here is a sample application if you were going to recruit that person yourself. This is not necessarily going through an agency. This also allows you to develop the position description and the employment contract. We also have checklists at the end. So I want to go back to, let's say that you were going to work through an agency. There are some questions that you are still going to want to ask an agency, irrespective of what um, your role is. So one of the things is obviously you need to know who is going to be coming into the home. You need to be knowing what the person's experience is. You also need to know, so you have um, appropriate expectations, whether that person is able to fulfill the needs that you have versus um, what they said they're going to do. So we're just going to have a little look up here. And this is on page four, um, in home care. And one of the things that is important to remember that the level of care your loved one needs also means the sort of qualifications they have. So oftentimes it's perfectly acceptable to have someone who is helping around the house, um, doing laundry, doing cleaning, maybe helping with some shopping and meal preparation and escorting your loved one if they need to go to appointments. That person also can provide companionship. They don't need any specific training, but if your loved one needs assistance with feeding, bathing, actually going to the toilet, having range of motion exercise, that person really does need to have a certified nursing assistant or home health aid training and qualification. This is something that we um, hold very dear because your loved one's health and well-being is the most important part of this. And you may need to maybe break up the time. You may have it that for the bulk of the time, you can have someone who is helping with housekeeping, um, helping with meal preparation and laundry, et cetera, and then have just for a few hours every day, someone with a higher qualification coming in helping with bathing. So then if your loved one actually does need assistance with medications, if they have a chronic illness that really does need medical attention, they may need wound care, they may need physical therapy. That's where you really need to have someone with a higher level of qualification. If you as the family or friend caregiver, if you are administering administ a medication, that's perfectly acceptable. But if you are paying someone, you actually need to have someone with the appropriate level of qualifications. So you're assured that that medication is given at the correct dose at the correct time. And also there's observation to make sure that if there are any issues or side effects, this person has the 
qualifications and know-how to identify problems and deal with them. So this document here is our hiring in-home elder care. It's a resource guide. So we also have a shorter version of this document. It's available both in English, Chinese, Spanish, Vietnamese and Russian. I'll just show you the English version just so you can see. It's a really good um, way of getting to understand how this um, all works and what some of the things that you should be thinking about. So we talk about who's a caregiver and in these documents the caregiver is the family and friend. Um, oftentimes that term is used also for someone who is getting paid in these documents, we call the caregiver that family and friend unpaid caregiver and the person who is actually paid to provide the care, that person is a provider. So let's have a look at that information that we just looked at before. So we know and we've just gone through it, what the different levels of qualification and how they can provide care. And this section here, let's just have a little re review of this. This is the difference between you recruiting someone to provide care for your loved one through a home care agency, or you being the employer and you actually having full responsibility. So some of the advantages and disadvantages are pretty straightforward. So if you recruit someone yourself, one of the things we know is that it is going to be cheaper. You are not having to pay the agency to do their work. But some of those disadvantages is that you actually are fully responsible for all of the supervision, all of the background check, all of the payments, all of the withdrawals for taxes and social security. And in many ways, you also, if you have someone that you recruit by yourself, that person is your only provider. Where if you have someone through an agency, they actually are the ones who are conducting all of that um, background check, licensing, making sure that person does have the appropriate level of training to provide the care. But also what they can do is if, say, the person who is normally scheduled to come and see you, if that person isn't available, then they can, from their team of other providers, they can get a backup person. And that's really important. Um, that's one of the things that can be challenging. You don't want to overwork um, someone because you're already tired. So really think about particularly if you need someone for extended hours, that maybe it is worth um, working through an agency, but you could have, say, that housekeeper who comes in and helps with the laundry, some cooking, um, some cleaning, maybe helping with shopping and some companionship. Maybe that's someone who you could recruit and they are someone who you, are, you know them, you can trust them, and they're working less hours. So another publication that we are very proud of, that is our guide to caregiver supports in Montgomery County. It has been available um, in English for a long time. Now we also have that available in Chinese, Spanish, Russian, and Korean. Let's have a look at that in English. So this is available um, online 24 seven and you can just flip through it. Um, the table of contents is pretty straightforward. We talk about who is a caregiver, how to keep safe, the sort of resources that are available through the county, resources available for our LGBTQIA plus community, Latino, Asian and African-American communities, 
plus also nonprofits that provide support. I'm just going to flip through this so you can see that it's a really good document. It talks to a range of issues and what's most importantly, it helps you as a caregiver have the resources that you need immediately. It's always good to pause and remind us that Montgomery County's Aging and Disability Resource Unit still operating. It's available to help you navigate both government and community resources. Easy to contact 240 777 3000. And we have a team of highly experienced folk who know how to help you connect with resources. So then we go into other resources available in Montgomery County. These are resources that are provided through both government and our community partners. We also have very close relationships with local organisations that are able to on the phone, in person, connect with you and provide those supports. We also like to remind folk about lifelong learning. One of the things for caregivers that people often forget is that to stay vibrant, to stay healthy, the best way to do that as a caregiver is to make those connections, keep yourself engaged and stimulated. And irrespective if you can leave the home or not, we have many fine lifelong learning organisations, including county libraries and recreation, that are there for you. Um, there are many organisations that also work on a national level, all providing free um, support, resources and lifelong learning for everyone. So this is, this is another example of why visiting the county's caregiver webpage is so important. So here we are back at the main page. So you're watching this through the county's Engage at Home. We also have a blog. Just going to take you to the blog. Now our blog is a terrific resource because it has the up-to-date supports, resources and information for caregivers. We break everything up into a range of categories. We have COVID-19 updates, caregiver support groups, special events, telephone and online programs, Caregiver 101 for folk who really want to understand some of the supports that are available for those that maybe are new to caregiving or folk who want to really make sure that they're connected to all the local resources and those that are actually national. We have a journal, we have a podcast series, and we have Engage at Home. So seeing we're at the podcast series, let's have a look here. So each month we publish two interviews. Um, oftentimes we have some bonus material that's available through our e-newsletter. I'll show you about that shortly. Um, they're short, they're under a half an hour interviews, many of them are really about 20 minutes, and they're topical interviews with really interesting providers, um, and we are up to our 28th um, episode in October, so um, we're very proud of these, and they're easy to listen to. You just go to the blog page, here is the blog address. You can also, as I showed you, get a direct connection through the county's caregiver webpage. And all you need to do is touch the button. That is the play button, and that will start the podcast. You can listen to it straight through your computer, iPad, um, smartphone. You can put in a headset, or you can just listen to it um, straight out. Um, very convenient and a really nice way of learning about what resources are available in Montgomery County. I also mentioned support groups. One of the things that's really terrific about our support group listings is that we try to dig 
very um, deep into what's available for a range of caregivers. Um, whether you're caring for someone who is young or old, um, someone who in many ways has many abilities, but um, you are the person who helps guide them and navigates them to the supports in the community. Um, at the moment, we don't have a lot of events simply because of COVID, but I still make sure that we put as many as possible up in the events section. Um, under telephone and um, online programs, that's actually where a lot of our events are. So please take the time to scroll through and look at all of the events that we have available. The blog um, is updated regularly and I make sure that what I do is have all fresh content ready at the beginning of each month. Another thing I wanted to point out to you is that in this section on the right hand side, you can type in what you're looking for. And just press search and it will take you to all of the postings, what, whatever um, time of the year that they were published. And you can keep on looking um, at all of the postings regarding the subject that you're interested in. Doesn't matter what category it is, they are there. The next section just down from that is how to subscribe to our newsletter. So when you subscribe to the newsletter once a month, at the beginning of each month, I'll just send you one email and it has a digital e-newsletter that provides you with teaser content for everything that's in the blog this month. So we don't send lots of emails. This is a county government's um, system. We do not share or sell your information. But it's very simple. You just put your email address in, press submit, and you then can choose what of the county's e-newsletters um, you would like. This one is called the caregiving um, newsletter. Now, down a little further, we actually have direct links to a lot of the county government services. We looked earlier at the county's webpage for caregiving. We also have one for the main aging and disability services. We also have counties African American, Asian American and Latino health initiatives. The county's police Alzheimer's and dementia outreach program the Alzheimer's Association, Holy Cross Caregiver Resource Centre, and the respite program offered through the ARC, Montgomery County. We have a growing list of disease specific information um, organised alphabetically. This section here labels, this allows if there's something that you like the look of, um, these are tag words and if say you like the look of um, LGBTQIA, you'd click on that and unfortunately I've chosen one that didn't link correctly. I'm going to repair that one, excuse me for that. Library. So here is um, all of our links to everything that we have ever put up in Montgomery County libraries. Next, we have all of the blog listings that we have um, done um, in this format since 2018, and it shows the total year. So to date, we've had 335 in 2020. You also can um, click here. Um, we did have a different format, and you can look at the postings there. Probably not relevant because they are getting back in time, but um, very pertinent um, um, if you're wanting to look at items that were just recently published. 
So this is our uh, blog and we're really glad that um, you're interested. Um, it also has a click link to engage at home, which opens um, directly from this site, little bit of information and you can just click there and it'll take you directly to engage at home. So just to remind you, here we are on the county's caregiver webpage. We have caregiver support and direct links right up the top. This here is a really good video. Um, it's very, it's, it's, it was recorded right at the beginning when I first started with the county um, back in 2016. And for about 20 minutes, you can sit back and learn about what the county does, the Alzheimer's Association, Holy Cross Caregiver Resource Centre, and the ARC Montgomery County. It's a beautifully published piece, and I think that you will enjoy watching it. We've talked about Engage at Home. Here is a few drop-down menu questions. So if you um, or a, a friend of yours is actually pondering how you can navigate some of this area of being a caregiver. It has very simple Q&A responses. We've gone through resources. Just want to remind everyone about the county's ageing and disability services. The phone number is 240-777-3000. That's where you can call whether you need a translator for other languages or you are comfortable speaking and representing yourself in English. We have teams of very qualified staff who are there to help you navigate the, your needs. We've talked about the blog and the e-newsletter. Here is a series of videos that were developed in partnership with one of the leading experts in Montessori and ageing, Jennifer Brush. She volunteered her time to help us to make a two-part video series. Um, they are both here. Each one is about 20 minutes and they're designed to help family friend caregivers who are caring for someone at home really work out how you can develop new skills, how you can be very creative in actually helping your loved one be comfortable and deal with one of the things that she talks about is responsive behaviours. Those are when someone becomes agitated, they may uh, become a little angry and they may have it that their day and your day it becomes um, unhappy. So this two-part video series is focused on how you can very simply make changes in the home to really deal with ongoing stimulation for your loved one, helping to understand what their needs are and to minimise responsive behaviours. Lastly, at the bottom of this web page, we actually link a whole range of resources that are available to assist caregivers nationally. These include nonprofits, federal government, and Montgomery County's other initiatives. So it's been a pleasure to step you through some of the resources available to caregivers in Montgomery County. I want to remind you that the county's Ageing and Disability Services Resource Unit is available for you. Call us 240-777-3000. So I want to thank you again for taking the time. I'm Lily Fisher and this has been an Engage at Home episode. I want to remind you all to stay healthy and calm. <laughs>